We are officially just a few minutes away from the career mode reveal trailer. Almost 20,000 people are sitting in this stream right now. It's absolutely mental. The hype is real. You cannot say this game mode is dead because it certainly is not. So there's a few things that we already know about career mode for FIFA 21. They've done a slight reveal a few weeks ago, but today we're going to get a full two and a half minute trailer with lots of details, hopefully. Not every year we get an actual trailer and sometimes it'll be a minute long. This is the longest career mode trailer they've ever released. So we're going to find out in just 60 seconds what there is to come in career mode for the next season. And I cannot wait to see what little bits they haven't even told the game changers will be in the new career mode. Or what isn't there, really. Hopefully it's going to be... Uh really good news. Hopefully we're going to get loads of new features and loads of new things that we can do because this, this game mode has so much potential. We all know it. So get ready guys. Sit back, relax and let's find out what career mode has to offer in FIFA 21. Here we go. Come on. Career mode. What we're really here for. Manage every moment in FIFA 21 career mode with a new interactive match sim, more control yeah. over training and developing your squad, and yeah. more ways to sign players on the transfer market. Yes! Ready for a whole new way to play out your career? The brand new interactive match sim gives you full control when simming matches. Jump in, jump in out. And out of the action when yes. you decide to change the course of the game. Or Bang in a goal and then get back out. To dominate the moments that matter. Keep an eye on match stats and player performance levels and make subs or tactical changes on the fly to influence yes. the outcome of the match. Love it. A new player growth system puts you in charge of your squad's development. Spotted a gap in your team? Turn marauding fullbacks into wingers and goal scoring midfielders into false nines with new position training. Yeah. And new development plans give you control over each player's growth to help you build your squad's attributes to match your style of play. Yeah, so we knew about these things already. Active training. Manage your team schedule and train multiple players at the same time with yeah. a new activity management system. Choose when to rest and when to train throughout the week as mm -hmm. you balance your players' morale and fitness with match sharpness. A new stat that shows you how likely players are to perform at their peak. Then boost it with group training sessions, monitor your players' progression, and find that sweet spot with fitness and morale to keep your team firing on all cylinders. Okay, play well and they'll be happy. Yep, match sharpness, train well, have rests. Whether you're all about the Galacticos or the hunt for the brightest young prospects, new options give you more ways to transfer players and a more realistic transfer market in FIFA 21. <laughs> what is that manager? Find players on loan to buy deals and negotiate player swap offers with other managers to bolster your squad each transfer window. Okay, that's good, but we knew about this. Overhauled Opposition AI gives you a more intelligent opponent to play against in every match you play. Oh, please. New tackling, player switching, and marking logic makes opposition defences yes. harder to break down. Make it harder for us, pitch, man. More intelligent attackers have a stronger understanding of dribbling and passing to keep you on your toes from game to game. Oh, that's a beautiful goal. With new ways to train, play, and make transfers, manage every moment of your career in FIFA 21. Okay, so... Um, this is all stuff that we knew, and it doesn't seem like they're showing anything new, if that makes sense. Uh, can we have the VOD now? I'm guessing it's ready. So it's two and a half minutes. It's the longest career mode trailer they've ever released. But unfortunately, there isn't anything new here. We knew about these features. So basically what this trailer is, is just showing you what it looks like. So um, this is their main feature this year. That is the new match simulation, the interactive match simulation. You're going to be able to jump into matches, jump out. You can see you can jump to result as well at the bottom there. That's a little bit risky if you're not winning the game. But this is a great feature. It's not a new feature. We've seen this before in previous FIFAs. I think it goes back to FIFA 12 or 11, something like that. I can't quite remember. It might even be 10 or nine, or eight. <laughs> it's been a long time since I, I played that career mode where you're able to actually jump into matches. But still, like, yes, there is a bit of a meme about um, EA taking out features and then bringing them back in as new features in a couple of years. But to be fair, this one is one we, we, we've really missed. We've really wanted this one back. And it's going to make it a lot more fun for, for players that don't want to play every single game, that want a bit more of a manager feel. Because what you can do, of course, is do the whole match like this. 
this. You can just have the players on the screen. You can track how they're how they're doing fitness wise, how they're playing. You know whether they're having a bad game, a good game. You can make substitutions and just simulate a match like this. It doesn't have to be play every game or just sim the match. At least now you've got more control of whether you actually want to play it. Uh, and if you don't, you can control the team still, just not play with the team. And I think that is a great feature. I'm actually very excited about this. And when I found out about this a couple of months ago, um, yeah, I was itching to tell everyone. I could not wait. I was under an NDA, of course. I could not explain any new features or talk about them, but now I can. So yes, match simulation with the jump in and jump out feature is here. And this screen that you're seeing here, actually, can I find a bit of a better image? Is there one where you can see... Let's go back a little bit. No, I don't think they're going to be... Able to, I'm not going to be able to get it out very easily here. Actually, it was here, wasn't it? Where are you? Come on. I'm trying to find it. Right here. So you can see the lineup and the bench on the left. You've got fitness levels. I'm guessing you can toggle between all sorts of other things, like their form right now in the game, um, their assists, their goals, stats. Yeah, you can see uh, Arnold's got the goal there. 66 minutes. Alexander-Arnold has the goal next to him. So you're going to be able to control the game, but not just play it. You can you can do it like this. This is basically coach mode, right? Which I really like. I'm a big fan of that. Now, player development. Let's have a look in this at this in a, a little bit more detail. When I found out about this stuff, uh, we weren't really shown too much. We were just told about it. This is news to me, being able to actually see the screens. So new to career mode in FIFA 21 is the player position training. So we've got Trent Alexander-Arnold here. 83 overall. I doubt it. That's going to be upped for sure. So he can be wide back, attacking wide back, inverted wide back, a uh, defensive wide back. But you can convert them into, uh, I'm guessing it's going to be similar to Ultimate Team. You won't be able to make a right back a goalkeeper, for example. But you can make him a midfielder. You could make him a right winger. So what we're doing here with Trent is an attacking wide back. ETA is 19 minutes, you can see here. 19... Did I just say minutes? 19 weeks. Development plans have regular growth when a player is in average form. So you need their form to be higher if you want this to be quicker. You can see the stats that will be improved as he is training into this new position. This is also something they haven't really mentioned. You can, as it seems here, change their work rates, skill moves and weak foot, which is massive. If you get a Youth Academy player... He's got an incredible potential. He's everything you've ever wanted. And then he's got one star weak foot, one star skill moves, low, low work rates. Now, unless you're on PC, obviously it didn't really matter. You could mod that before. But um, if you're on console, you, you've now got control over that. You can now go ahead and upgrade their weak foot, their skill moves and their work work rates, you know, attacking wise and defensive wise, which is really good. Um, what else did we see here? Yes, yeah, so we got more positions available here. Was that... So he's on balance there. I'm trying to work out. Okay, well, um, you can make him a CDM, a centre mid, left mid, cam, centre forward, right winger, striker. It looks like actually pretty much every position is there, obviously, except from goalkeeper. It doesn't look like we're going to be able to convert a right back to a centre back. I'm guessing you probably can. Um, so here with Firmino, you've got balanced ah uh, okay right okay so this is more like training drills almost it's like the type of player they are these things here on the left these um different categories i guess are going to change these uh chevrons you know what 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 uh, abilities you're going to be improving whether it's your attack positioning shot power or if it's going to be reactions and composure and that is the growth tab here which is selected and then you've got position here so you'll be able to have a look and see what positions he can play by tabbing across. Obviously, we're not able to see that. Um, I'm a little bit unsure if they are fixing the stupid decision in FIFA 20 to not show nationality in their player info. Um, that's a little bit, a bit annoying for me. I think that should definitely be put back in. I will have to mention that to them. Um, ignore the stats, by the way, the player ratings. They are not final. In fact, I'm pretty sure most of them don't even have the updated pictures yet. We've got Firmino with an updated picture there. Um, but let's have a look at the, the squad page here. So you've got a lot of new emblems or logos next to their name. So obviously we've got morale, which is the, uh, the smiley face, the unhappy face. A lot of these players seem to be a, a little bit average at the moment. But underneath that, we now have the match 
sharpness, which you can see on the right here. So we have 64 fitness, 72 sharpness. Sharpness is a new stat, a new, a new thing to control in career mode in FIFA 21. So as you are training your players, their fitness levels are going to go up and down, but also their sharpness is going to go up and down. If they don't play in enough matches, their sharpness is going to come down. Training will help bring it up a little bit, but really you need to get your players rotated into the team. If you want all of your players to have a good amount of match sharpness, you need to really balance it out. You cannot just throw in a player that hasn't played for six months and expect him to have full stats. So what you're seeing here, it's very similar to Ultimate Team this year. This is what they told me. When you look in their stats, you will see certain stats have been upgraded based off these three things here. Fitness, sharpness, and morale. If all your all your stats here, if your, if your fitness and sharpness and morale are high, your stats will be boosted more. If they're less, you know, if he's unhappy, his sharpness is low and his fitness is low, they're going to lose stats. So let's say you're doing an Arsenal career mode or, or a Liverpool one in this case. You've got Milner on the bench here. Let's say you go six months without playing Milner, but he's still doing training. He's um, He's still got match fitness you know his fitness levels are still 100 but his sharpness is down at 40 he will undoubtedly have some stats in in the red minus he might have minus three pace or something like that so it is absolutely vital that you rotate your squad that you play your reserves that you play your bench as much as you possibly can without obviously weakening your your chances of winning games and things like that it is more important than ever to actually manage the squad which is what career mode is meant to be so although we're not getting new flashy features per se this right here for me is huge it's a game changer because what do you want out of manager mode i want to feel like the manager i want to have to make some big decisions throughout throughout this the season if you go into an fa cup game you've seen that one of your key players is missing a bit of sharpness you want to throw them into that game and then maybe you get to a champions league game and you're seeing that fitness levels aren't very good right now so maybe you need to take a few rest days before it just having to make decisions in the current career mode it is literally just press play it, it really is isn't it you just simulate the days you play a match you come out you simulate a few days you play a match there's no thinking really other than transfers and who you're going to train this time it's different we've got to be more careful and really balance everything out next was active training so the calendar has had a massive change as you can see here looks really nice i'm a big fan of the uh the, uh, the colour scheme of the Premier League, at least. You can see there's the Premier League lion behind. So what we've got here is presumably rest days when you've got the three Zs in a cloud, in a thought. Uh, so those those days are where your match match fitness will go up or your, your match sharpness and... No, your sharpness will go down most likely a little bit, but your fitness levels will go up because you're not training, you're not playing, you're getting your fitness back. These are then training days. You've got some more rest days there. That's like a recovery day. Now, I'm guessing recovery day is a forced day of rest. You cannot do training the day after a game. I'm guessing something like that. Um, you've got recovery day. Yeah, so schedule rules. You've got rest day, recovery day. It's an intermittent rest. So one, one little problem I, I thought about this a couple of weeks ago, months ago, whenever it was when I saw this um, it's going to be difficult if you want to simulate a whole season. You're not going to be able to go in and, and do all of this unless you spend an incredible amount of time just making sure you've set up training when you just want to sim a whole year to do whatever you want to do, whether it's making a YouTube video where you've simulated five years or if you just don't want to play the first season, you want to get straight into the second season, that this could be a little bit tricky. But it does seem like you can just use schedule rules. So every time you have a game, you will have a recovery day after and a rest day before. And the weekly plan is just intermittent rest with training in between. So it doesn't look like it's going to affect things too much in that regard. But if you really want to be detailed detailed with your calendar plan then uh, you can that's something you can do so here we've got the uh, other bits of training these are the drills so you've got interceptor we've got oh my god how many players have we got here so we've got carl walker he's just in this one we've got rodri he's only in this one stones only in this one aguero de bruyne okay so everyone is in just one drill here but you've got normally five players five slots uh, per week and it seems like you're going to be able to do a lot more here so we've got six we've got wow 11 players that's a full first team that's amazing i don't know if he whoever's doing this clip here hasn't filled up the rest of these slots 
Um, but as usual, you can play the drills or you can simulate them. Uh, I would love to know if anyone actually plays the training drills. I would put a lot of money on that maybe 1%, probably less than 1% of the career mode player base actually play the training drills. They probably just sim like everyone else does. Um, oh, wow, look, only training. Jeez, you're going to make your players absolutely exhausted. It still has rest day before a match, so your player's fitness will be uh, a little bit better going into the game. But you can, look, you can do training day right after a match. If you've played badly and you're saying, come into training straight away in the morning so we can work on this, then you can do that if you want. Um, I've just realized as well, they've got whether it's a home or an away game on the tile. Oh, I love it. God, it's only been 20 years. We've needed something like that. So, weekly schedule rest day. Players are resting to gain back some fitness while losing some sharpness. There you go. Confirms. You need to be constantly training, constantly playing if you want to keep that match sharpness up. But fitness levels will go up here. Sharpness will go down. Morale will go up. Um, and you can see just the uh, calendar at the bottom here. So, that's, that's quite nice to see. What else do we have here? Training day. Players are training to gain sharpness but spend fitness in the drills. If training occurs after a game or back-to-back -back training sessions, players will not be happy and lose some morale. Players who do not participate in the training drills will have a rest day. Okay, so again, you're just going to be really careful with your squad, aren't you? Just making sure that you don't just do the same five players for half a season like you do in FIFA 20. At least that's what I typically do. I just want to boost a few players really quick. You're going to have to be making sure you get other players in there as as well or you're going to be wasting valuable fitness valuable sharpness and things like that which you could be using on other players in your squad um they showed a little bit of a, a training drill here so this is the um the squad management page again you can see they're talking about the three uh, really important stats to keep your squad happy and competitive uh, the training drills never really excite me i'm not gonna lie and here you can see they have been able to fill out this side a bit more here so we've got three three and four uh, what else do we have here? Yeah, look at his stats being boosted. So Foden, who I'm sure is going to be one of the best young players in the game, has 100 fitness, 92 sharpness, and he's happy. And look at this. His dribbling has gone up by five. That is very ultimate team-like. So what, what, I, what I like to compare this with is like putting a chemistry style on, uh, on a player in ultimate team. You instantly boost some of those stats. If you can get these three stats really nice and high, it's going to be like putting a chemistry style on a player. They're just going to be better in certain aspects of their game. Right, new transfer options. I was really hoping, because they used this image in the thumbnail, that you could choose to be a current manager. So if you want to play as... Uh, do Chelsea as a career mode that you can actually be Frank Lampard they haven't announced that so I don't think that's a thing that would have been a really nice feature if you ask me but um here we've got the new shortlist sent sent offers receive offers trans transfer list thing it's the exact same as it was before with a new uh a new bit of paint um I I'm not too sure if anything's actually changed here but the options when you go to click on a player will be different because there are now new options when it comes to signing players. So Chelsea are trying to sign Harvey Elliott here, another young player that I think could be very good. You've got basic terms or you've got loan to buy. So loan to buy is exactly what that says. You loan the player and then you buy them. So after a year, maybe you pay a fee that was decided at the start. And you then keep that player. We've had that before. Um, but the difference is now you're able to get offers from other teams that want to swap players with you. So you're not just going to be doing loan deals. You're not just going to be signing players. You're also going to get some very, very interesting offers. Let's say you're Chelsea and you, you get an offer for Zuma and they're offering Varane. Like, can you imagine saying no to that? I'm not saying that's probably going to happen. It might not. The game might be smart enough to realize that is an incredibly stupid deal. But those are the kind of things that could happen. Let's try and think of a, a slightly better one. Maybe they want Zuma and they're offering you Fernandez plus 5 million or 10 million or something like that. Then maybe you're going to be put into a little bit of a, a dilemma. You know, like I, I wasn't thinking of selling Zuma, but I could do with this player and a bit of money. Uh, okay, let's do that deal. And then the next window comes up and something else happens. They're offering someone plus cash for Mount. It's just going to change things completely you'll be going into a transfer window with a plan and then instantly you get an offer from another team maybe it's a rival team as well and you just your, your plan goes out the window because you've all of a sudden got this option in front of you 
Uh, what else did we have here? So, ah, Zuma, there you go. So, Pep Guardiola, let's discuss alternative options. To let Zinchenko go, we want 6.8 million, and we'd also want to sign Zuma as part of the deal. So, yeah, Zinchenko, left back, uh, exchange player, 23.5 million plus the 6.8 there. And then uh, Bernard Fischer, <laughs> that's what they called this manager. Great, we've got a deal. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to have any new backgrounds. Uh, otherwise, they would have showed that for sure. Uh, okay, so then they finished with the enhanced player uh, AI. So if we watch this bit here, you can see De Bruyne's on the it's ball. Against in every match you and that's Mount, I think. Let me turn it down, otherwise it might be a bit loud. But I think Mount has just slid in there. Opponents to play against in every match like, you okay, play. That, that does happen in FIFA 20, just not enough. So maybe that's just something they've made happen more often but this one was really interesting so Fabinho gets the tackling and they look at the players they all just suddenly look forward they're ready to push that's what they don't do this this is superb so we've got I think it's Salah on the ball he turns flicks inside and finds the pass oh mate I cannot wait to concede goals like that it's so easy Karim mode is too damn easy even with sliders at times which is really disappointing. And here you've got Liverpool's new kit at Anfield, of course. Of your career in is Wijnaldum going to stay? Overall, guys, this is this is good. It is good news. Uh, we're about to go and check if they've got the pitch notes up. Because if they do, we're going to have a little read through that. Um, but in general, you can see at the top here. So they're talking about the interactive match sim, the player development, active training with match sharpness and things like that, the new transfer options and the better AI. I swear if this is just, you know, them saying it's better, but actually it's marginally improved, then I'm going to be really disappointed because the biggest thing for me in FIFA 20 is it's just too easy. It is way too easy. Signings are too easy. After one season, you've got way too much money. You don't get sacked easily enough after they patched it, of course. There was a big problem where you get you get fired for just offering a player five grand too much um since that patch you just don't get fired very often now um and yeah just like you know you're running in behind and you're you're, you're pretty much guaranteed to be one-on-one -on -one with the keeper because the defenders literally look at you and go i'm just gonna let you run and then they just leave you i i can't stand that it drives me mad but let's see if the pitch notes have been hang on is this it let's have a look career mode right we do have some Okay, it's not really a pitch notes. Ah, here we go. Pitch notes for career mode. Interactive match simulation. You can see this. Let me just zoom in a little bit so you can read it a little bit better. Pre-order now. I'm all right at the moment. Um, interactive match sim. We know everything about that. We don't need to, to have a look into that. Instantly jump in or out. The interactive match interactive match sim allows you to jump straight into action. And by the way, it is instant. So you can see it here. You get like a three second countdown and then you're in. Which I think is, is really cool. How has he missed that, though? That's disappointing. But you can see here, they've got the ball in the box. He pauses and then jumps in. Three, two, one, bang. That is, it is cool. It is definitely a cool feature. So in this one, we're looking at uh, PSG winning 1-0 against Liverpool here. And he jumps in. No, he jumps to result. I mean... I don't, I don't know if PSG would actually win that game, to be fair. <laughs> um, okay, so one thing that I brought up with them a couple of weeks back, and unfortunately it's not good news. If you simulate the game in this screen uh, and they score, there is no way to see the replay. And at the end of the game, there is no match highlights. You cannot go back and see the goals, the gameplay, which really sucks because... You know, if you're watching the match simulation like we are here and you see a goal go in, you want to see the goal. So unless they've changed that, I very much doubt they have in the space of time we've had since that meeting, then uh, we're not going to have that feature. That has to be added into the next game. You, you can't just ignore the goals. Okay, when, when a goal is scored, it should automatically treat it like a normal game. That should then be put into the match highlights. So at the end of the game, at most, or at the very least, I should say, you should be able to jump in into the match highlights and, uh, and watch it back. So new match launcher. So you've got play match, sim match, quick sim, which is like it is now, team management, and then you've got the customize as well. Just looking at the lineups. Um, why doesn't Hang on. Ah, okay. So this is the team they're controlling here. 
can see the controller there. You can see all the ratings, but you don't see the ratings of their team. I'm wondering if that would be different if you scout a player. Let's say you've just scouted Salah going into this match. Will you see that he's, you know, 92 rated or whatever it is? That would be interesting. Um, possible lineup or probable lineup. So you don't actually get a guarantee that that's the team that you're going to play against. Um, okay, so player growth. You've got major attributes. So that in increases their overall. Skill move and weak foot ratings, especially for attacking players. Fantastic. You can do the work rates and you can do the attributes that fuel specializations. So I guess that's the specializations here. The balance, target man, poacher, mobile striker, complete striker. Yeah, you can see as he's going through these, which stats get improved. I love that. It's not just, I want to improve his shooting. So you click a shooting drill. You've got so much more than that now. And it will improve these things up here. Five-star skiller, by the way. Right, position conversion. Can we see more than just these options here? Is he going to scroll through them all? Doesn't look like it. But again, changing position will change the drill. Will change what stats get improved. Active training, we've, we've talked about that. It actually tells you here uh, their fitness and sharpness. Okay, that's good to see. Um, path to goal, stop. What was that? There's, there's so many different names flashing up here. Path to goal, stop the wall. Seems like there's new drills that you can do. Um, you've got how intense the training drill is, I guess that is. Player sharpness. Okay, so looking at a striker, for example, when their sharpness is 100, here is the attribute view, attribute boost. It's got four positioning, five finishing, three ball control, three shot power. Um, ah, yeah, okay, so this doesn't represent their final... Um, overalls when the game comes out. But look, it actually shows... Can I blow this up? I can't. Let me just zoom in a little bit. You should be able to see this better now. There you go. Um, so Mbappe is sitting at a minus three right now because his sharpness is at zero. But to be fair, it's not even that harsh. A minus three really isn't that bad. He's still going to play like a very, very good player. You've got Icardi on a plus three. Um, but what, what you can see here is it does not add into their overall so Marquinhos here is 86 rated we all know that giving that plus four does not make him a 90 rated player um on the actual number itself but of course he will play like a 90 rated player I think that's that's really cool let me zoom back in a little bit um okay so yeah he got the sharpness reaching zero positioning minus four minus five finishing minus three ball control minus three shot power it's almost like you know having a player in ultimate team with low chemistry it's very very similar uh feedback system playing in his preferred position okay so um better decision making by surfacing the most relevant information to you there are now three elements that impact a player's overall in addition to their development and age so you've got to play your players in their correct position. Um, yeah, this is something I couldn't believe it when I found out. So apparently, in, even in career mode now, if you do play a player at position, they do lose stats. You just don't see it. It's hidden. Now, when I found that out, and you know, I can't 100% confirm it because the guy who mentioned it, he might be wrong, okay? But apparently, right now, if you jump on FIFA 20 and you play Obama Yang at left back, he will be a 60 rated, 70 rated left back and he will play like that. Now, that might seem obvious to you guys, but it doesn't show it. It doesn't it doesn't say that that's going to happen. However, in this game, if you play a position out a player out of position, you will see he's got a minus 20, a minus 25, and I think that's that's a really nice addition. I want to see my bad decisions with my own eyes. I want I want to know that I've done something wrong, you know. There's the team schedule planning. We've already gone through that. Uh, here you can see, I think that's a La Liga background, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Oh, I love that you can see the results as well. Look, you can see the result. You lost this game. You don't need to hover over it to find out. Lovely. Okay, new transfer options and improvements. So we've got loan to buy, AI player swap proposals. This is what I mentioned before. So while player swaps were introduced to career mode a while back, you might have noticed that AI was still preferring old-fashioned cash-only transfers. It's very true. The AI will now make player swap proposals with players of their own. When you attempt to buy a player from another club, they can propose a swap as well. So that I didn't know. You can approach a team for their player. I'm going to Real Madrid and I want Hazard. And they might say, no, but we can offer this player. That's huge. That is absolutely huge. 
Okay, right. Additional improvements on boarding. As we are constantly adding features to the game, it's becoming more important to provide information to our players about the inner workings of Karimo. This year, we are taking the first steps in the, in the direction of teaching players the purpose of each system within the mode. Okay. Um, expanded competition user interface. In previous years, we gradually introduced new UI elements. Um, adding competition-specific UI branding. Yep. Yeah. Fully immersed, yep. Yeah. So we've got Premier League, League One, um, in the French in the French league, we've got the German league, the Bundesliga, La Liga, MLS, Champions League, UEFA League, and the um, Libertad Li Libertadores and the Sudamericana. <laughs> press conference morale impact. We redesigned the way press conference answers impact the whole team. For mo for post, sorry, for post match interviews, only the players that played in the match will be impacted by your answers. Oh. Genius. Again, another feature that was just too easy. Like, oh, your, your players are upset. Play a game, win that game, and then just do your post-match conference and just say, hey, my guys were really good today. Oh, look at that. They're all very happy again because it doesn't work like that, okay? Play morale and player form. We've received your feedback that maintaining a high morale level for your whole squad is too easy. There you go. So we added a layer of depth. That's good to see. Established Youth Academy. This is something I really wanted in this game. It's still not what I want. They haven't done the exact thing I'm looking for. I want a youth squad team. Okay, a reserves squad. So I can activate my first team, which has my bench and reserves if I want them, but also like an under 23s or a reserve squad that have their own league. You know, that would be absolutely amazing. When you take on the manager um, of a club, you no longer have to start setting up a youth academy by yourself. The club will already have a youth scout hired and a number of players already recruited. So this is another thing I, I wasn't able to talk about, the pre-order thing, the homegrown talent. So what that is... If you pre-order the game, you will get a homegrown talent already established in your club with these other Youth Academy players and their youth scout. But he will be from the nation that your club is in. So if you're, pl if you're playing with Arsenal, you will get a homegrown talent, an English player, a young English player that's going to have a very high potential. And this homegrown talent is only available if you pre-order the game. You're guaranteed to get that homegrown talent. Now, what I must stress is you don't need to do this because when you get the game itself, even without the pre-order bonus, you're going to have players in your youth academy and the chances are you will have a very high potential player. It's not guaranteed, but you're going to have some good players and they might be English as well if you're in the Premier League. So you're actually still going to get homegrown talents. It's just guaranteed if you pre-order the game. Um, obviously, I recommend you do that because why wouldn't you? You want homegrown talent guaranteed, right? But if you don't get it, do not fear. You can still get youth players from your own country that have a 90 rated potential. Anyway, it can happen. And then um, financial takeover, that's going to be at the start of career modes only, I believe. So within the setup of a new career mode save, you can set the amount of cash you want your club to receive as part of a financial takeover. So the um, the catalog is gone. The EAFC catalog is gone. You cannot buy a takeover with your currency, whatever they even called it, EAFC coins or whatever. Um, and you can only get a takeover at the start of your career mode. You can no longer get one after a season or two. It's gone. You can only do it at the start, which is a real problem for me. I, I, I'm not a fan of that, but on PC, you can fix that. You can give yourself more money if you want. Uh, negotiation strictness, that's back now. So that was something we had many years ago. Um, you can make things more strict. So you're not able to get bargains so easily, which I think is, is really good. So for example, some people always enjoyed the fact that we let you build a star-studded team without any limits. But for others, this might feel like it's unrealistic, of course. Instead of picking one of the two approaches, we figured the best way is to allow you to choose how you want to set up your career. So strict negotiations mean that clubs won't be interested in taking offers from a rival club. You can't deal with Tottenham if you're taking over Arsenal or vice versa or other clubs. Players won't be interested to move to a lower ranked league or club they have a grudge against. Players with the one club player trait uh, won't be interested in joining another club at all. You won't be able to sign, you know, like Xavi was. You know, you wouldn't be able to sign Xavi if he was playing still for Barcelona. Uh, you won't be able to approach players that sign to a club for less than a year. So maybe they've removed that if you're not playing on strict. So even if a, if a player is just signed for a new club, you can still get them. Of course, that can happen in real life. It's very unlikely. It doesn't happen very often, but still. 
Um, when the negotiation is set to loose, all of the above limits are off. There you go. So you can make these transfers without any of the above restrictions. You'll no longer have to play for a season to be able to get the players. Why didn't I just read on? <laughs> so if you put loose, it means you can sign players that have just signed a deal in real life or in the game. So that's that's good to, good to, good to know. Um, okay, player retirement. We changed the, the player retirement logic to trigger only if the player is in the final year of their current contract. This will allow star veteran players to push retirement further. We've also changed the age at which players retire to make retirement age closer to 40. What? That's crazy. Youth and regen player personality. Fix an issue with player personality and emotion for youth and regen players that had improper personality and emotion assignment to these players. This caused issues with how the morale of these players was impacted through press conferences, blah, 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 blah. Board objectives. We've made some changes. Uh, requirements are now more clear around the brand exposure objectives specifically. Yeah, very, very unclear, wasn't it, really? You just need to make money. Okay, so win competitions, sell shirts. Like, you've got no control over it. We've replaced the objectives around match attendance and season tickets with milestones that the fans would love to see in a club. These milestones include reaching a certain amount of wins in a season, winning a streak at home, a run of unbeaten games away, many more. We've also changed the requirements to give youth players playtime to two seasons in, in order to make sure there's plenty of opportunities. I love that. That is actually a very underrated new feature that even I didn't know about. They didn't tell us that. So that's good to see. That might have been implemented in the last month or so. Uh, loan and transfer negotiations. There's a lot here, isn't there? Jeez, I'm losing my voice here. Um, we identified and fixed some issues that were causing the player transfer decision score to be a higher, to be higher than it should be when it comes to transfer offers. Here are some elements which can factor into negotiations. So if the player has negotiated a release clause, if the club has negotiated another offer for a player, if there's another offer for them already accepted by the club, if the player is a free agent or if they were listed to be loaned or transferred, if the offer is coming from a club in the same country, a uh, comparison between the player's nationality and country in which the buying club is based. That's good. So this is all to do with how you're going to sign a player, how likely it is going to be something you can do. Um, the overall of the buying team and the ranking of the league. How the player's overall compares to the league overall. Jeez, that sounds like it could, it could be making this a lot harder to sign players that you want, especially if you're in a lower league. You're not going to be able to get those young Premier League talents as easily um, as you saw with my Sunderland career mode, for example. Current contract length, contract length, length of the loan, uh, how much time the player spent at their current club. Wow, that's detailed, isn't it? Uh, how much the player's role differs at the new club compared to the current role. This one's extremely important as it plays a significant part in the transfer decision, with players more likely to accept a crucial role at another club if they're currently only used as a rotation player. It's an upgrade in his contract. If you go from you know, barely being used to being one of the most crucial players, they're probably going to be interested, aren't they? Uh, if the buying club is using a formation that features a player's preferred position. Wow. That's broken. What? But how, how does the game know which formation that you're using? Unless it's just the one that you leave your squad hub on. I often change my formation when I go into the game. So if you're about to buy a player, you're going to have to make sure that that formation that you have it set to in the menu is suited to the player you're buying oh my god that's a bit crazy i'm not sure about that one that could be a problem all of this information is added up into a single score okay interesting broadcast improvements oh okay so we've got more um uh atmosphere i guess is the right word goal music as well wow that's cool i hope it's not copyrighted though don't forget we need to upload these things New broadcast stories, TIFOs, crowd card designs. Okay. Ah, Alex. That's the guy I've spoke to a few times. He's a nice guy. I'm I'm really happy with some of these extra little bits. I'm surprised they didn't just add some of that information into the trailer. A lot of people will not read these deep dives, these uh, pitch notes, because they just want to watch it. They want to watch the trailer. And some people might be coming away from this thinking, yeah, there's some okay improvements, but not much. If you read this, there's actually a lot going on behind the scenes as well, especially when it comes to the transfers. And we're actually learning more. Like, I, I've got to give it to the guys. You know, being able to read all of this, I didn't know. I kind of gathered it, but I didn't know for sure that when you sign a player, everything's given a score of likeliness. And we're now able to control it. And I, I will probably have to come back to this when we get the game 
and make sure that I'm I'm doing all of this stuff. You know, making sure that I'm approaching a player that's likely to come through. Otherwise, it's a waste of time, isn't it? But uh, I guess that's it, guys. That's a long video, isn't it? Jesus. I've really enjoyed the uh, the breakdown that they showed on the trailer, but this is just something else. So much information. Hopefully, you've enjoyed this video. If you've made it all the way here, then you're a proper legend. If you have, leave a comment saying that um, you are excited <laughs> for this. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you drop a like. Thank you, EA, for giving us a little bit more information. If you want to read the pitch notes, make sure you go to their website. Um, gosh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a good year. I'm hoping that career mode this year will be fun for longer. Uh, FIFA 20 got very boring for me quite quickly. Thankfully, the Sunderland career mode kept me going because I did enjoy that. But uh, like right now, I don't want to play it. I just want to play FIFA 21, please. Hopefully, I'll get my hands on the beta soon as well so I can... Um, actually test some of this stuff out that'd be interesting but we're not long not long away now we've got what seven weeks until it comes out so we're almost there